and welcome back to the Dino Bidala Show. Friday, March 29th. It is Good Friday. Not just the religious holiday. It's a good Friday because we have a superstar panel for what just happened. We have Andrea Jones-Roy, who has a PhD. She's a social scientist specializing in complexity. She was a professor at NYU until the incident, a circus performer <laughs> and a comedian. Good to see you, Dr. Jones-Roy. Dr. Good to Jones. see you, too. I'll never tell you what the incident was. Oh. Are you not connected with NYU at all anymore? Is that true? I I am loosely connected. I think I'm a I'm a an affiliate faculty member or something, but I, I couldn't I couldn't handle Gen Z grade complaints for one more second. So I'm out. Wow. Yeah. Remarkable. Yeah. Also back, wow. Maureen Langan, award winning comedian, Bloomberg award-winning. television and radio host, TEDx speaker. A lot. speaker and all right enough stop i can't stop that I stop it sent me i didn't send that i didn't send on season 18 but you told me not to stop reading even though you're gonna um, check semi-finalist america's got stop. talent lost she to a dog lost to a dog season 18 my career it says, skyrocketing. It says right here, to, I, I should speak over you pretending to object. WBAI. <laughs> post objects, objects harder. <laughs> so, yo, yo, congratulations. You have a new show on WBAI. Yeah. Wednesdays at 4 p.m.? Yes. Call, call what? Badass women, badass where women. I badass women, where I talk with badass women, the men who love us, and the issues from the series to the seriously funny that affect all of us. Well, that's great. I had yeah. a show on WBA a long time ago. Me and May Sunzai used to host a show once a month called it was some Arabic badass expression. Oh, no, sure. that was, it was you don't even know what it is. This is before you were Arabic. No, no, it was badass. Arabic. This is when you were Italian. You're no, like... it's, I'm still a half Italian. Just stop. And look who else is here. Pete Dominic, and I have to do the normal disclaimer. If I would, if it wasn't for Pete Dominic, I would not have my show. I always have Thank to say you. that. Thank you. He hosts a podcast stand up with Pete Dominic. He's a great comedian. He will perform in your house for a fee. That's what I have here. Pete Dominic, good to see you. How it is you? great to be here with this talented, talented group of people. Do you have a new show anywhere? Are you doing I don't seven have days anything. a week? I have you're, just you're my doing six. Day- what are you Just looking at? Daily podcast that it's six I, days a week though. Now you've expanded it, right? Super sometimes size. even more. Sometimes even more. Yeah, people should stop telling others that it's that hard to produce a podcast they just want to make themselves look like martyrs i will produce all of your podcasts all of the podcasts it's not that hard let's make it hey dominic all right let's talk about a lot of us as comedians have sold merch have you ever sold a bible a personally autographed bible (laughs) (laughs) no none of you well donald trump is yeah i haven't thought of it personal but he wants to make america pray again for 60 bucks a bible and i call it he wants to make maga pay again i just think it's remarkable you had last month, we had the sneakers and the cologne, which got little press. Mm. The Trump cologne, smell like cheeseburgers and desperation and victimhood. And now we have the new Trump Bible with Lee Greenwood, which is not just a Bible. It comes with the Pledge of Allegiance, in case you don't know it, the Constitution, mm-hmm. another thing he has never read, and something mm-hmm. else. Andrew Jones-Roy, you're an expert in, in complexity. This seems kind of right. complex. What's going on? It's very complex. His his complex really is that he can't stop shilling terrible things on the Internet and in the world. And I'm just upset that we didn't see it coming. Dean, I don't know if you called it, but I every time he rolls out with one of these things like I'm doing the sneakers, I'm doing the what were the digital things he did like a year ago? NTFs, NTF, NFT, NFT, NFTs. Like, I feel like every time I hear one of these things, I should have seen it coming. And then I don't. So I don't even know. I think he's going to sell toilet plungers next month or like that goo <laughs> that you use to to fix your roofs and, and fix bookshelves and stuff on late night. Flex seal oh, uh, stuff. I've actually got to do a live read now that you brought it up. He's so, yeah, the Ron yeah, Popeil. He's the Billy Mays Ron Popeil. <laughs> that's of right. Stuff. Of presidents. <laughs> for, for the Aid that's coming up for Muslims, he'll be selling the Quran autographed by him and MBS. It's going to be lovely. And him and MBS type of deal. That's right. Maureen, what about you? You're a big fan of the Bible. That's what I've heard. Lying I laugh because I got the Irish mother, right? And I said to her, you know, mom, we don't know anything about the Bible. I mean, there's, we went to Catholic school till I rebelled. You know, she's from Ireland as Catholic as you can get. So we don't know anything about the Bible. She's, well, we're not Bible people. We're Catholics. Uh, <laughs> so it's and, different. Oh, you're not literal, right? Catholics well, don't take the Bible literally like evangelicals. You know, it's very interesting, though. I was doing, I was doing this uh, history and genealogy course out of Ireland recently. You know, it was a 16-week course about the history. Anyway, the thing about the Catholics is that the uh, in Ireland is that oftentimes, most times, the church and the priests interpreted the Bible for you. So you weren't really... Sure. studying it whereas the protestants and on the headstones you might have a quote in a protestant uh 
graveyard of scripture. But in the Catholics, you'll have like an angel or a cross or a heart because, and it's so true, it really wasn't, they weren't reading the Bible kind of people in general. They were being interpreted through the church. Which so I found that- Do so many terrible things to children. It says right here. It says right here. That's my interpretation. Well, all right, Pete, do you think that Trump has a special version of the Bible where it says, thou shall commit adultery or (laughs) thou shall not steal except elections? Like, do you think there's a special special version of the Bible he's selling? Because I didn't buy it. So maybe in it, it's different. We don't know. It is. His set of rules is so antithetical to the set of rules that religious people follow it's very very hard or supposed to follow for people to understand how they could follow him but i mean if, the, if you read like christian dumez or or so many other people that have been writing about christian nationalism like they're, they're explaining it to us if you want to listen they're explaining it to us these people it's a cult it's jesus was born in missouri and carries <laughs> a machine gun it's the, it's whatever they want it to be it's this militant form of of christianity and i think people that you know, liberals, progressives, Trump haters like like us need to just be honest and understand what it is. It, it's not a a contradiction. I mean, obviously it is. They're they're not they're not acting like religious people. It's that this is Christian nationalism. It's really well documented. There's so many of these leaders and bum frick towns all over the country and churches all over it that are telling people to be militant, to stand up, and and you know Trump is their leader, and they don't care about what he's done to women and how terrible he is because they can they can always justify it and we shouldn't let our minds be blown. We should just fight them. We should fight them on the beaches. In fight well, you know, at Myrtle he's Beach. Doing a church, he's Myrtle doing Beach. A church. Stop Myrtle it. He's doing a Churchill Beach. impression. Which is like the pan awful. Handle. It's a cartest it's very cartoonish church. I'm a big fan of Winston Churchill. I'm offended That's... for his family. From that, so you know, Churchill legacy the estate of shamed. Churchill's family. I'm going to contact them when we're done to try to make sure they bring a lawsuit to get a TRO out. against you. Maureen, you were going to say something from the Bible? No, or something I, with Irish yeah, I was going to quote the Bible. Something yeah, I was going to quote Jackson. the Bible once I learn a verse. Um, but it, honestly, like when this comes out, I keep thinking it's it's a satirical piece. I think yeah. it's an onion piece. And it keeps being true from the sneakers to the cologne to the Bible. And the man, you know, I did a joke in um, Massachusetts and a table walked out that I said he was caught with a stripper. I would have been more shocked even caught with a book. And people were, and I go, no, stop it. He I loves the Lord of the lies. Now I see the woman catch her on the pussy. He loves the classics. Uh, I said, but. And I said, the he, table walked out. Oh yeah. They cursed me out. Was, there a, was that the only table in the audience? Was that, <laughs> you were only cause you were opening for me. And they put you right. in the <laughs> That was but, a joke um, for Pete. Sorry, I'm uh-huh. sorry. Oh, well, I know Marie in a long time ago. That's so nothing. hurtful. I'm so sorry. What's happening? What's meant. going on here? That's are we trying to help each other's careers? Or are we trying to, like, what's happening here? I, I got up I really apologize. early. I need this on the day my I'm Lord sorry. is crucified. I got to be crucified. Uh, what is happening? Yeah. Oh, you're Maybe right. they I'm were sorry. just really big fans of J.D. Salinger and thought it was messed up I, that you twisted the name. I know. in the pussy. Very funny joke. But your point is. But well, my point being is that then when he, remember the time he went and he held the Bible upside down in front of the I was mortified. I'm watching it live as I, you know, and I'm going, what? And I'm live tweeting, you know, what the heck is happening? What is going on here? And the fact that people will follow it. But then again, you know what? Pete, you were making a joke earlier about, you know, people mindlessly following the Catholic Church and some of the bad things they do. I do not equate them to Trump because there's so many great Catholics and good people doing Trump. the right thing. So I don't want to disrespect. Well, I know a lot of them. My sister, I know a lot of people. Uh, I know friends who are done. Uh, which, no, you didn't meet the other one. Uh-oh. So there's six <laughs> of us. We're Langans. We keep going. But I'm saying there's a lot of really good people, who, sure. and, and I don't want to denigrate all of that. But you do follow somewhat what, mindlessly, don't you? In, well, in I was talking ways. about the priests, not Catholics. I know right. what you were doing. Yeah. So, but but one does follow them mindlessly at times. We we put them up on a pedestal, and this is to the nth degree. And it's just really frightening when you see what can get into somebody's mind, and that they're willing to do this and and follow this. It keeps getting worse. Well, and it just I, solidifies. We all have thought of. Trump as a as a cult, as a religion, as like the evangelicals are just swarming after him. And it's like, finally, he's making it as clear as possible that he actually is a religious leader. Now here are Bibles. And I'm sure he's put his own branding and his own twist on things in in the contents of the book. I almost want to read the book. If if it weren't, I haven't read the Bible. I feel like it shouldn't be my first Ever? Bible that I read. <laughs> no, it shouldn't. <laughs> like that. <laughs> so that means I have to read another Bible before I read this one. But uh, maybe I will. It's not just picture. Go ahead. Sorry. Well, is it? I was just going to say, is it weird that I'm not sure whether or not he's ever said that he had it worse than Jesus? Because he said it about, I think, Lincoln, 
No one's been treated mm. to me. Like, I'm not sure. sure if he said, I think he said something about Jesus had a tough, but so did I, or something like that. He's always the, the, the consummate martyr. He is the victim, right? He also said he made an infomercial for this book, which I found amusing. I watched it. I usually, I try not to watch it, but he said, all Americans need a Bible in their home. And I have many. It's my favorite book. He literally said that. And he couldn't oh. fake. He couldn't stop himself from smirking. Cause even <laughs> he, there was a, a moment, a glimmer of self-awareness oh, where like he's yeah. like, yeah. and it's my favorite, you know? And like, you're like, you couldn't, he couldn't sell it. Like he even knew this is the, that was the glimmer of the scammer. That came out. There was the con yeah. man, the grifter, where he knew that, yeah, this is a, a scam. And these people are dumb enough to, to believe it. And if you believe it's my favorite book, you should buy this book for 60 bucks from me. Well, it's I interesting. Did. He's raising money. He made, and then Biden made $26 million. He's raised money off all these gimmicks, and Biden makes $26 million in one night. Well, you know, that's an expensive Bible by, that Biden's selling. All right. So let's, that brings a great problem. Chad with Pete Dominic, Maureen Lang, and Andrea Jones Roy. Andrea, Trump. Yeah. For all this bravado, if you talk to his supporters, he's out raising Joe Biden. He's making more money. He's really not. He's trailing actually quite badly now. And it's kind of bizarre. Yeah. And, you know, we had Pete jump ahead on my calendar here of events. But <laughs> last night, Joe Biden Purple. raised $26 million at one event. For context, in February, Donald Trump raised $20 million in the entire month. Mm. Like this is we're not in the same world. This is That's right. and I hate big money in politics. But it is an indicator and also gives you resources to win elections. What's going on? Even Trump's small donor donors, there was a recent analysis. It's dropped way off. I, I Something is up. I mean, I think part of it is that Trump, and I've been wondering this for a while, especially with the Bible coming out, is that Trump has surely tapped his supporters dry, right? What percentage of disposable income mm. are so many? Of these, and look, I spend my money on all kinds of ridiculous things, and I would shell it, give it all away for tickets to the Eras tour. Like, I'm not above this. But <laughs> how many people are buying the NFTs and the shoes and the cologne and the this and paying out of pocket to go to the the rallies and that sort of thing. Like he's he's not tapping into, yes, I, I want small donors in politics too, but this isn't small donors. This is people being duped by infomercials. And I think they might just be running out of money. He also is, is I guess, using it all on legal fees instead of actually campaign wow. things. So I'm not surprised that maybe the bigger donors aren't donating anymore either. Or maybe it's the case that now that both Biden and Trump have the nomination, we are all coming to our senses, or at least I am, and waking up to this is the reality. I can't just sit back and complain about it anymore. So maybe people are coming forward and being like, yeah, Biden is the candidate. Maybe he's not our favorite candidate on the left, but he is who we have. And we've got to put money towards this because we can't have another disaster, more of a disaster coming forward. Hmm. It's true. Pete, yet last night they had the big event at Radio City Music Hall. Stephen Colbert interviewed Obama, Biden, and Bill Clinton did you do the warm up? Were you involved? In that? Oh my you god, it's, that's so funny because I was gonna make that joke and you. Oh, made I'm sorry. That's what I mean. I, are so they asked like... me to warm up, and I was I was booked on the Rachel Ray show. Uh, <laughs> so I couldn't warm up for the presidents. Uh, I did work for Stephen for a long time. You did uh, work. No, for I, I think the important my my. I think one thing that's I just don't know the answer to, and I've studied money and politics, interviewed all the experts over the years on it. And I just wonder how much it matters if Joe yeah. Biden's campaign, it, it certainly matters for down ballot races. And I'm I, I'm very much uh, politically active locally right now. We're in sure. the fight again with our school I've board. Here. So that. I know money every every dime matters in the in the lower ballot down the ballot and so on. But I wonder when it comes to does Trump need hundreds of millions of dollars, billion over a billion mm. dollars, you need to, you know, or and I'm not sure. I just don't know, because I think people are so activated. I do think a lot of. Turning out the vote matters, even for Trump voters in certain states. It's going to matter. And if they don't have that's where it matters, if they don't have people doing everything they can to get every last one of those people whose hearts are filled with hatred out to the the, the, the polling, you know, and a lot of them, by the way, still don't trust because Trump told them not to uh, all kinds of other voting methods, sure. uh, absentee voting, mail in voting. And so I don't know if he have money to educate them, reeducate them uh, like his dumb daughter in law is, then I don't know. Pete, you made such a great I, point. That's the key. This is going to be a close election. And what that money is for, it's not like an ad's going to change someone's mind. Hmm. But here might I people might find this curious. In 2020, do you know when 30 the the final 30% of voters made up their mind about who they were going to vote for between Trump and Biden? Oh god. Anyone know what month that was? 30%? November. September. September, like, so people, that's me, like, people are watching, and then about I don't believe 10%, that, but they didn't know, come on. That's what it says, I, I well, can only you, go, what are you, a trucker, you don't believe data? 
I'm sorry, Andrea, talk to me about data. Let's go. All we right. trust well data on our side. <laughs> the data showed also exit polls around 7% said they made up their mind in the last week. Like they're like, after everything, they're like, I, they're so similar. I don't know. <laughs> they're just so alike. I can't I tell. And I mean, part of it bro- could have been, Dean, you, you know these polls better than I do, but part of it could have been undecided in the sense of, am I going to show up and vote for Biden even though I'm on the left and I don't agree with him? and Or am I going to issue a protest vote? And maybe right. the same for the Republicans on the Republican side as opposed to like Trump. Or there are people out there who are like, I literally don't know and just want to mess with everything. It's it's inter- that's going to be a bigger question for twenty. Well, Maureen, it took Maureen Different. to the very last second, and she's one. Why don't we let her? She she and then she landed Trump. on Trump. So, was a, yeah, that? no, Wait, I was a write-in. I was a write-in vote for no. Laura because I wanted to hear more songs. Maureen, <laughs> Maureen, let me ask you: Have you made up your mind for twenty twenty yet? Um, <laughs> to to activate my Irish citizenship, well, very vote. much so, very much so. Um, yeah, we've talked about this. You have. Yeah, I do have Irish citizenship. Yeah, yeah but um, from the immigrant, wow. my blessed immigrant mother. Yeah, EU. Yeah, here why are you still here? Um, cause I'm holding out hope that people like right? us can prevail. Um, you know, I listen. You are a lot more confident, Dean, than I about uh, Biden's chances. When I've been on your show in the past, you and I think sometimes because you are, we are like minded, so we're amongst lot my like-minded people who find it absurd that Trump can be running and this is crazy. But I hear people out there that, and it's shocking to me, but it's becoming less. So I, I'm really afraid that he's going to win. I hear the people there. Look, he could win. And not everyone I talk to is pro Biden uh, because I have a lot of friends who are Arab American and Muslim American. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the Gaza war, it has made people yeah. who are pro Biden. Now yeah. the hope is that a ceasefire is reached in the near term. And then from there, Biden could do things to win them back, right? That's going to be on him. It's not on me. It's on him to win them back. Right. But it, it's not. I, I think when it comes down to it, I really think Trump will be a convicted felon before we get to election day. Yeah. That will be used against him. I think the New York case, we'll talk about the New York case. It's kind of interesting. And, and Pete, you mentioned the grift. Uh, Laura Trump, who was the daughter-in-law, yeah. who got the co-chair of the RNC because yeah. she's married to one of the dummies of named Eric. Trump is now, Eric Trump, is now releasing, she released a new signal. She had released, a, yeah. I Won't Back Down by Tom Petty cover a few months ago. She's not a good singer. It's not because she's no. Trump. She's just not a good singer. I don't Terrible. know what this is. I'm not a good singer. I'm probably better than her, but I'm not really good. Like, I think it's a song, Dean. All right, here we go. We want to hear it. So now she released a new single. I woke up this morning and she's dropped a new one and is taunting liberals. And I know liberals won't like this. So she got the RNC grift to grift even more. Pete, there's no end to the grift of the Trumpers. She's I'm, using the platform she's been given by Trump in the RNC to propel her music career. And I mean, I'm sure it's working to a certain extent and that she's letting people know that she does this. She's an attractive woman to some people, I, I would imagine. And so they're probably buying her stuff. So, you know, in a way, more power to her for grifting off the mass, uh, the main grift. I mean, she's winning. I, I like that she's grifting off of her father-in-law, who, by the way, didn't even know her name until like a year ago. Uh, <laughs> But you know, and, and, and what did the, he call her? You think the lady, the la- the lady with Eric? He called her of Eric, like of Eric, uh, wow, like Gilead, I'm sure. Uh, so I mean, I'm almost for it, and I'm also I'm really rooting for her, and I'm being serious because she has no idea what she's doing. And again, I pay close attention to local politics. I'm involved in local politics, so it's always a money fight. And the fact that she's going to run that RNC and just funnel every cent to uh, the tyrant in law. Her father-in-law, I mean, it's great. It's great. She has no idea what she's doing. She's not even remotely qualified being there like everybody else he appoints. Right. Uh, it's a loyalty pledge or higher, and it's great. It's really good for us, and we should see as a, as a total positive that she's there. The only her. bad thing, and this is just constructively true, is that there were some big money people who didn't want to give money to Trump directly, but now they can give to the RHC, mm. and their name's not connected to Trump. And I was reading about that, that they can funnel legally money to Donald. So if some people wanted this in between, they'd be like, hey, I didn't give money to Donald Trump. That was always going to be a way. There's always going to be a way to get money. to But the super PACs are even more are connected too. this was a way. I don't know how much of it's going to be. And we're going to see how much they're able to raise because she's the co-chair, the real chair. The functioning chair is the guy from North Carolina, the, the former Republican chair down there. Election denier bullshit, that kind of stuff. Unbelievable. So I, look, I, I agree. I think it was Andrew who said this. And I'm pretty sure we're going to go back to the tape. 
But the more she, like if she sells an album for 10 bucks, that's 10 less dollars yeah. from the Trump base to get the Trump. That's so let, point, the, yeah. let them yeah. just grift everything, yep. sell everything, yep. S sign things that day, take off your jacket and sell it. Yep. Like Maybe I'll start releasing Trump merch and just sell more crap and see if I can just drain the drain the pockets. I'm, <laughs> I'm doing that with you, Andrea. That's a really great idea. Thank I'm going to start selling sell? Trump merch, uh, 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 anything. It doesn't even matter. Yeah. I don't even care. Like anything. Have you ever bought <laughs> merch for? I have one politician shirt. I have an Obama shirt. Yeah. And it was like, and it wasn't from the campaign either. It was like Obama's Obama going to knock you out. Like Mama's going to knock you out. I said Obama's going to knock you out. And I would wear that. And That's I awesome. bought one shirt from the Kentucky Democrats, which was Moscow Mitch. And all I, I have it is it uh, fun. right. All so I have is my RFK Junior signed syringes. <laughs> I figured we were going to get to that. And your RFK mask? Do you have that? And you campaign around Westchester? He's got look at every poll, and I was at ten or twelve percent. He's going to be one of the highest drawing third party candidates in a long, long time. At least at he's pulling from Trump, right? I mean, he's not possibly. It's can't hard imagine. to say right now. It's not. He's not helping. Yeah. We don't. Imagine. Here's the truth: you won't know to the autopsy, and that's the worst time to know. And that's mm. literally what you won't know. Because after it's over, you're like, ah, if, you know what? If, he pulled more from Trump. You, you won't know what? If the vax killed them? If, no, <laughs> if the vax killed them or if... What is so remarkable? The everything bad in America. The ship hit the bridge. Like, yes, you see vaccines. vaccines. Yeah. It can't be. Everything can't be a vax. I'm Every sorry, bad laugh, thing is the I vaccine. I laugh every time a very old person or celebrity dies and someone says vax with a vax it's like you know they're 90 amazing they killed Lou Gossett jr died today he's in his late 80s yeah. vaccine. Oh, legend, legend. Died, legend. great guy yeah i'm very big on deaths i can maureen go through a whole list of them maureen anything you want to add you seem a little like puppy doggish like something's happened to you maybe it was me did i do anything to hurt you today or <laughs> i feel oh yeah puppy doggish that's me that's me you all the way her? i just <laughs> I cannot, you, you know, emotionally, did I say something that was painful? You know what I'm I mean, opening see. up here like a sandwich that wasn't wrapped properly. I'm taking it all in. <laughs> I, you know, I got to be honest with you. I have been so tired of all following all the news and all the Trump stuff. It's just sickening to me. And I've been tuning in to overseas broadcasts and newspapers. And okay. there's other countries outside of us and there's even countries you know oh. east of italy and france i'm discovering and there's Are a whole sure? continent called africa i didn't know about this but what? it's all new and like gonzaga that's an african country a lot We're of people go don't know that right. by the way have you tuned into <laughs> al-qaeda chatter it's my favorite show it's a big show is that it's your called, podcast your other it's podcast, podcast called al -Qaeda al -Qaeda chatter. Chatter. It's, when it's do we really get invited good. on that that's you have to speak Arabic and you have to wear a burqa. Inshallah. I'm sorry, you know, there are certain rules, but yeah. that's how it goes. And mm. we're chatting with Andre Jones Roy, Maureen Langan, and Pete Dominic. So, okay, this was a huge story for like a four or five days. The uh, NBC News on Friday, we learned, mm. hired Rhonda McDaniels. She was gone by, I think, Wednesday or Tuesday, but it was remarkable. They hire her. Here's what's remarkable first of all, people on the left. The backlash was really ferocious online, like really more than I've ever seen. And then on air talent on MSNBC and NBC with Chuck Todd, but MS badmouthed their own talent. I've never seen that. Pete used to be at CNN. No one badmouthed you when you were hosting in an, a, a, a pundit well, there, did they? Well, actually, you, me, and Mark Thompson at Sirius XM went on MSNBC to be critical of our bosses at Sirius XM when they hired Steve Bannon back. I'm pretty sure you joined Mark. Did I? I? Stop <laughs> that. We're going to delete this part of the show. I'm trying to keep this job. Uh, come on. That's all I got. Um, we oh, were. And I wrote an, art and I wrote an oh, article for the Daily Beast. Yeah. Critical so I of think Sirius that, XM. That's first of all, I just want to point out that you, to your listeners, did that. You actually stood up and, you know, you weren't disrespectful. I wasn't disrespectful. But but uh, there are times I think. But I'm the only like, one still at Sirius XM. So what does that mean? <laughs> like my time tick tock it's just that's what and this is your you last broadcast for, it's, it's you work for a amazing. bag of apples i think is what it means but <laughs> no i mean i think i think it, it's a point to your integrity and i think it's a point to anybody who's integrity i think it's it, what, what matters is there is a threshold there was even in corporate media um which much of which i actually like and and respect a lot of different journalists across corporate media and and was a member of corporate media until i started working out of a shed behind my house but uh, i mean the bottom line is you can't bring on an expert who thinks the moon is made of cheese. You can't do it. You don't do it. There is that threshold. And you forever, since I should say the election, 
all corporate media has said we will not bring on election deniers or, you know, and or we won't hire them necessarily, much less bring them on their shows. And that's exactly what happened here. The, the idea that MSNBC, I mean, apparently one of the executives that brought her in was a donor to the Republican Party, which is also a real conflict of interest. Most journalists, much less executives in journalism, don't publicly or even privately donate. That's a yeah. dumb career killer. And so I, I, I think there is a threshold and I think we saw it and I think it's good. But you That's know what, too? What are the problem with this? You know, I was a journalist for years. That's what I studied journalism. I was a journalist. I was a documentary producer. I worked at Bloomberg. And I say all this because as a comedian, uh, you know, there's a line in the sand. And I take journalism very seriously. And it does not exist in the way it's supposed to, very rarely anymore. So I think what happens is we've it's become, you don't know who the real journalists are. You don't know what outlets are real journalism platforms. So I think what happens now is when somebody calls out a Rona Daniels or McDaniels or whatever her name is, um, when they call her out, there seems to be so much hypocrisy because there doesn't seem to be much purity left in journalism. So people are like, well, why her? How come this one can come in? I agree with you. You're bringing an election denier on, but it's all about entertainment and ratings. Look, right. CNN would bring in that pundit that Stephanie Grisham, the the Trump, uh, Malena's best friend. Yeah, what, you know who I'm talking right, about. Right, Stephanie she's Grisham. the spokesperson for, for uh, Melania. For, right. for Melania. Yep. And, you know, that woman was like rabid when she was her spokesperson and she was awful and she would just like push physically push people out of the way physically you can't mm -hmm. touch people and all of a sudden now she's on their team we give credence to people who i don't think are credible and then we get upset when it's somebody i, I wouldn't have put ron but i wouldn't have put stephanie grisham either hmm. unless you wanted an inside entertainment scoop then i would I would have had Stephanie on, oh, let's get the back dirt on this. Or oh, what was it like working behind the scenes? Give me the dirt. And I'd be really clear. We're giving dirt now, not mm -hmm. journalism. Mm -hmm. So I like mm -hmm. it. Can we go back to Pete saying I have integrity for a second? Because I really <laughs> like that. I've you haven't heard, heard that, that before? In, never in my, my career. Uh, but no, Pete makes an excellent point. I recall that. And, and we did that because it was for our own credibility. Because if we were silent exactly. and yeah. Steve Bannon was brought back, and, yeah. we, and this is not... Tell this us about is, what happened. Give us the right. background. You guys know I but don't. Trump was Trump was out of office. He was still in office. They brought him back, right? Trump yeah, Bannon. But Bannon leaves like a year in, so it's not post January six or anything. Bannon goes in the White House, comes back out, and then they hired him. And then it seemed like Sirius XM was actually happy when they had an excuse to fire him because the backlash was so great, Real not bad, just from yeah. us. There was so much. Backlash. I shared that studio with Steve Bannon for over a year. And then I came in one day, he was hosting a show. I was hosting a show on another channel, but we shared the studio and I came in one day and I was like, where's Bannon? Uh, because I didn't see him there with his hand and the lower back of a young female producer. And I was like, oh, where is he? This is peaceful. Ugh. And someone said uh, the Trump campaign hired him. He's the Trump campaign ch uh, chairman now, chief. And I was yeah. like, what? It's like in September. And I just I just remember that young producer saying, yeah, apparently because um, we, you know, Sirius XM, the studios there on the 37th floor. Apparently, Steve Bannon that day turned into a bat and flew out the window. <laughs> and and that was it. He got called in. He went over there. And so Bannon gets brought back after really the White House point? and Republicans were so I mean, people listening to our show couldn't believe you're bringing him to the Trump world, who's a bigot. Yeah, and now, then this they, is not they post fired January him. 6th. They Richard hired him back. Book exposed that that Bannon criticized Trump, so Trump fired him to save face, and then SiriusXM hired him for obviously for access. I mean, he worked in the in the Trump in the White House, as close to the president the day before. So you understand why SiriusXM hired him, but that didn't mean it was okay. And we went out and we told him. I, I privately and publicly said it, and you know, I got in a lot of a lot of scrapes during that time. Didn't it certainly didn't help me. Uh, but eventually, they SiriusXM fired him. That's exactly what happened, and that's the truth. So, Andrea, any surprise here how it went down? Like, they went from, I thought they were actually going to just bench her yeah. and pay her her money. But then they're like, we're terminating you. And now she might get a lawyer to sue them. Because there were a lot of people on air bad mouth calling her liars and stuff like that. And that's fine. But I was watching, like, hmm, this might be going beyond just the termination part. You might yeah. get sued. And now she said she's going to sue them. So no, it, it's just, the whole thing is just like a microcosm of our entire dysfunctional set of views around politics in this country. And I'm thinking here, like, why would they hire this person? And I think Maureen's point is exactly this. They're just trying to make a lot of money. And the the mainstream media is worried that like everyone to the right says, oh, it's all garbage, left leaning bias. So they're like, OK, we'll get a shill from the right and put them in and, and make everyone happy. And of course, it makes nobody happy, but they're just trying to sell. So I come from academia where 
far as I can tell, leadership in academia is just trying to make the students happy so that they can keep getting tuition money and they don't actually have any morals or any goals or any, mm. this is, I can say it now because I'm no longer there. And wow. I, I'm not in media. Wow. I was in journalism for like six months and I was horrible at it, but uh, I had too many opinions, bad. But uh, it does seem like that's what's happening here. It's like, we just want to cater to the whoever we can get to get eyeballs on our screen so that we can sell advertising and we'll do whatever it takes. And so we see these extreme moves. We saw with SNL and Dean, you'll know more about this than I will, right? Like Shane Gillis is hired. And then it's like, oh, the backlash. Oh, he's fired. Oh, now we're too woke. Okay, he can host. Like we're just pandering. No one has any values. We're just trying to make some money and we're doing it wrong. The New York Times does it all the time, posting various extreme things just to get clicks and outrage um, attention. It's that's no one's excellent point. who has integrity. You three, you have integrity. We do. Yes. Rama Yusuf <laughs> is hosting Saturday Night Live. My buddy is hosting Saturday Night Live yeah. tomorrow night. So I yeah, know Ronnie's long. awesome. I appreciate, yeah. that. I appreciate that rant because it's. It, it, I do feel yeah. like I could have. I, I don't think I could have because it's not in my character. But I do agree with that analysis, and I do think all the opportunities I've had in media, I could have always made a lot more if I was willing to sell anything and say anything. I just, mm -hmm. I just couldn't do that. And so mm -hmm. I've made a living. I didn't. I don't make a million dollars, but I make pretty good money by actually being able to aggregate an audience of people who care that you are trying to be the change that you want to see right. and mm. you are actually not just saying it like the great Joe Madison who recently lost who was yeah. a mentor of mine a legend in broadcasting at Sirius XM that guy yelled and screamed on the radio but guess what else he did went on hunger strikes and, and, and went to Africa and marched and did all of the mm -hmm. things and those are my heroes and that's who I try to you know as best I can the standard you walk past is the standard you accept. So if you allow this stuff and if you sell this stuff, then you you are nothing. And that's what most people in media are. And they have huge houses, but they're unhappy. And I have a tiny shed and I am perfectly content. And well, I mean, that's say, very good. And that monologue was brought but... to you by MAGA. Make sure. <laughs> I live <laughs> in the Prius. But... Get Bibles. My Get MAGA paint Bible. a bigger shed. Let, let's take a break. We're going to regroup. We're going to come back. A lot to talk about, including uh, GOP calling a basketball team foreigners and Supreme Court, the actual trial date for Donald Trump, which I actually think is going to happen, folks. So let's take a break and come back. More of what just happened right after this. And welcome back. Dino Bidala. Uh-oh, what's wrong? Uh-oh. Uh, hey, Maureen, can you drop your gain a bit? You're very hot. Oh, really? She has no idea how to do what you're saying. That's the look it's on her face. I do, Dean. I oh, know. I'm sorry. Okay, she does. Sorry. sorry. <laughs> Don't make me of, beat I, you. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know how to drop the game. All right. Well, then speak for yourself. You. I'm not coming at you. All right. Yeah, no, it's good. Uh, let me let me let me know how um how it Matt? is now, Matt. Is uh, it all right? As go still? a bit higher. So go I'm higher. Not, uh, speak a bit higher because oh, it's okay. Maybe I was too close to the microphone. This is a yeah. Yeti, and the gain is pretty low right now. But let right. me. Yeah, in that case, in that case, lean away from it a bit because yeah. it, that's that may have been what it was. It was very. Uh, all right. All right, Maureen. You're Gene. professional. All right, Gene. excellent. You're good to go. Matt's never come back. This is kind of awkward. All right, I'm glad wow. All right, here we go. Ready? And welcome back to the Dino Dollar Show. It continues to be Friday, March 29th. Andre Jones Roy, Maureen Lang, and Pete Dominic are still here. So, my friends, here's kind of interesting. On the judge this week set a trial date for Trump of April 15th here in New York for his election fraud slash hush money case. I only call it hush money because that's what the media calls it. It's not a hush money case. It's election fraud. And he committed crimes and committed mm. crimes to cover up his crimes. I actually think we're going to have a trial. I think Donald Trump's trial is going to start <clears throat> a week, 10 days to do jury selection. And I honestly think by June he'll be a convicted felon. And I wasn't sure we'd ever see this, but that's, I on, and I don't know how it's going to affect the election, but I think we're going to see this. So, Maureen, you're in awe of this. What do you yes. think deep down? You are really a journalist. Do you think we're going to see? <laughs> oh, they be nice to me now. Look at now, now giving me <laughs> Maureen <laughs> lying in my favorite people, not, putting aside my own, are the Irish people, the best people in the world. Well, I some know of our the, people. The, uh, the you know. I get excited when you say things like that, Dean. It mm -hmm. really, I mean, it really like, you know, when you say that he will go to trial, yes, and he'll be, there'll be a conviction by June. Unfortunately, this is like the least important one of them all. You, you, you pay it off. until he's convicted uh, of 30 felonies because that's what yeah, he's facing. I know. I hope this is a domino one, but I really wish Bonnie Willis didn't sleep with her colleague yeah. and that that was moving ahead. I was just like, Come on, what are you doing? This one, I don't think people, I think people think you're supposed to pay off the stripper to shut up. I think they think like that's what you're supposed to do. And that was like a smart move. 
I know it's illegal, but I think to most people, well, of course, you don't want your wife finding out. You pay her big deal. What you just said, hang on, what Maureen just said, though, is the problem for Democrats. If people view this as some hush money payment that he's paying off a porn Mm -hmm. star because he had an affair six months after Melania gave birth to their baby, it doesn't help. What the case has to be about is the facts surrounding it and that they literally fabricated retainer agreement and invoices and they didn't want America to know in the ho- and it was in the firestorm of the Access Hollywood tape. It come out like October seventh. Mm-hmm. This they went up to Stella Marie Daniels three days later. Like they're like she's about to go public in the firestorm of Access Hollywood. So I think the burden is going to be on Democrats to make the case to the public. This has nothing to do with hush money. This but they don't fraud. even know how to make the case that we're almost at forty thousand points. On, uh, you know, in the stock market, they don't know how yeah. to say that the, the Democrats don't know how to sing their own songs. Laura Trump can sing a song and she can't sing. Uh, we don't know how to put it out there. What we're doing, what we've accomplished. That 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 there's health care for people out there. That you know, most teenage girls, single uh, moms, I, are impregnated by adult men. So like, yeah, there's so just, much we I, don't say. I so actually disagree with that. Um, <clears throat> And oh, I just think that it's and maybe I, I don't know, maybe Andrea can speak to this, uh, but I, I just She's think psychologically judge. we don't pay attention to the good things. So I do think Democrats constantly promote mm-hmm. in all of the ways the good things they're doing. I just think that, A, people aren't impressed because you're supposed to do good things in government. And B, we don't pay as much attention. Our brains don't to good things. And, you know, from reproductive rights to to voting rights to uh, the investments in infrastructure. I do believe Democrats are touting that. Mm-hmm. I just don't think that Pete, it, I don't think it it's indelible to voters and I don't think the perception, but just back to the, the Stormy Daniels case. And I'll obviously I'll let you disagree with that again, um, uh, Maureen, or, or, or I want to hear Andrew say, but just simply, I think a lot of Trumpers will be like, he slept with a stripper. That's why I'm voting for him. Uh, it, porn star. That's why I like him. And they those like same for, people buying the Bibles, obviously. They, yeah. they like it for doing a coup. I had a listener to my show. Yeah. And this is what I do with Trump. I, awesome I don't debate, did Trump do a I coup? Like I don't debate, did he cause January 6th? I say, if Donald, just said, assume Donald Trump attempted a coup, assume he incited January 6th, would you still support him? And they go, yes. Because it doesn't matter. Like, well, you're dealing with that. Let's go to Judge really. Andrew Jones-Roy. You've All heard right, both sides so of the much. argument. You've heard I, Pete I, Dominic make his case. Maureen Langan, you were Judge Wapner. What's going on here, Judge Judy? Sorry. Talk to us. Yeah, I, I've I've appreciated hearing both sides, but uh, we're gonna have to do a paternity test. Uh, what? I think I think Didn't that's that the wrong. It's Maury Povich, not Judge Judy. All right. Okay. Uh, we'll do it anyway. But um, no, Rich I Janine, think, talk to yeah. us. Come on. I I think that there's there's truth to both. I think that the Republicans, and particularly Trump, did so much boasting, like the stock market's never been better, and then we all on the left would say, well, that's not the same thing as the economy, and blah, blah, blah. And literally last night, I was walking home from a show, and one of those annoying things on the streets of New York City that has like little headlines says, the the stock market hit an all-time high, blah, blah, blah. Last night, I saw this, and I thought, I had no idea. I don't Mm -hmm. really follow that. I'm mostly in my own little world, but I feel like I should have heard. And if Biden were Trump, we would not be not hearing about it. And that's right. Boasting. But that's right. I do think sure. that we could and we could do a better job of of promoting the good things. On the other hand, a lot of people on the left feel right now that things are really bad. Genocide, Palestine, whatever the hell is going on in Russia, Ukraine. A lot of people are starving. Reproductive rights. It feels wrong to go out and say, like, well, here's what we can celebrate. Like, I think it's a message that the left oh. isn't really wanting to hear. <laughs> but. I also think that we're not really playing by the Republican rules of let me boast. And I think until Trump, Mm -hmm. neither side was doing this kind of like boasting about whatever. And yes, the stock market's doing better, but there are a lot of problems. And I don't really want my politicians running around and celebrating when we have all these problems. So I think both are kind of right. But the Republicans are playing this nasty game where they're just going to point to their successes and then they're going to demonize the left as being a threat against the country. And the left is not doing those things. And in principle, I agree with that. But in practice, it makes us sound like cowards. And Maureen's totally right. We just can't get messages out in the way we don't know sound bites. We don't know sound bites. Look how great we're doing here. Look how great we're doing. Repeat, repeat, repeat. And I'll tell you something what we should be doing. We're not funding Ukraine, right? The hold up on all that. Guess what? Hey, guys, we don't support them. Uh, Putin attacks a NATO nation. Your kids are going to war, baby. Yeah. Your, yeah. So but let's I, keep your so kids from going to war. Keep hmm. your kids from going to war. Support Ukraine. Keep your kids from going to war. The, we don't I, say anything. We don't I, know. We do. I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what Uh-oh. show I'm on. Uh, uh, did you not the watch Dino the Vidal show? Union? Sirius XM channel one twenty seven. All the sound bites. <laughs> all the sound bites. You're saying that we don't do. I see them all the time. 
You're not looking. Well, then on I'm, your show, you hear him, right? No, no. I, I, I got to tell you, know, Pete. Andrea had a scene news hold on, let me on just, the let side me, of a falafel truck. <laughs> on a halal cart, had a, a ticker. Yeah. And the then she found out the election out of, was hot. The one thing that's left out of this conversation that, ha- that, that nobody's mentioned yet Uh-oh. is I'm involved in a local fight. And we are up against Republicans, right-wing MAGA people. And I think what people don't realize is while we're trying to talk about what our Board of Education education candidates are going to do want to do we also have to react to their constant lies we have to we cannot let them say a thing is happening in the schools that isn't so a lot of our time and energy is focused on reaction and we have to do that they don't have to do that to us because we don't just make stuff up that they have to defend against so first we have to react and also we have to put out the message but we are doing that and when people say well why aren't you doing that i say in every single way that that can be done on Facebook, on Twitter, at speeches, slipping it in, appearing here on these different things uh, and shows that you wouldn't necessarily find it. We're doing all of the things you're saying we aren't doing. We are. It just doesn't cut through for any number of reasons we can discuss. But we yeah. are doing it. It's That's the problem. Being done. Can it's... I respond to the Pete, though, on this? Please do. Um, I think it would be very good. I'm looking forward to this. Please. No, no I, I... <laughs> order in the court. We are like, we're definitely like minded. But, you know, when I say to you, I don't hear people talking about Ukraine, NATO, your kids might go to war in America. I, I don't, don't either. And I got to tell you something. I have my sources of news. I am prolific. I mean, I read and I watch and I see what messages are being put out there. And I'm not seeing it. I'm not somebody who scans. I have a reading list that I look at every day. So I don't know where you're seeing all that because I'm not. US, every rep- Democratic senator is saying exactly what you just said. Every Democratic congressman who makes the uh, argument for Ukraine funding said exactly what you just said. Like, I'm not hearing about, it out there. That's I have the a theory based yeah. on nothing, uh, which is that I think there's a distinction between what you two are talking about. I think, again, you can both be right uh, because there's there's the saying of the message and then there's the traveling of the message to places oh. where we're hearing it. And like Maureen, I also think of myself as someone who's relatively well informed and follows various political outlets, but I'm not really hearing what senators and Congress people are saying. So something about what's being said. I agree is with getting that. Lost you know what you guys are. OK, can I just say what you're saying now? I'm going to share all the links. Can I just I'm say all the links? But I, just share all the links, but I also it. do have to mention that Maureen has a Palm Pilot, so she's not seeing a lot. Stop of it. it. Don't <laughs> do not do this. And I get my news from Buffalo Wild Wings. I just watch all the screens all the time. Yeah, yeah. Here's the thing. Frank Luntz has a great book. Frank Luntz is a jackass in certain ways, but he's very good at some of his books. And the book is titled, It's Not the Words You Say, It's the Words People Hear. Yeah, and I know. always remember that. And in the book, he talks about politicians who, he goes, when politicians are literally tired of repeating the same message, he goes, that's the first time people have heard it. He goes, yeah. I'm, so, like, I'm so tired of saying this, because that's the first time in general. It's repeat, repeat, repeat over and over and over. And to Marine's point, look at how many times have we heard Trump say, Joe Biden's coordinating all these prosecutions against me. When have we heard any Democrat go, no, some media fact check it. But I wish the Biden administration would put out a press release every day, a statement every time Trump says it. We have nothing to do with Donald Trump's prosecution. So it's in the articles, at least, where it's denied. Instead, it's just one side. It's Trump going, this is a whole thing is orchestrated by Donald Trump, by Joe Biden to prosecute his political opponent in New York, in Fulton County, in Florida. It makes no sense, right? But uh-huh. Democrats go like, no one's going to buy that. Well, some are if you don't push back. That's the reality. Well, I think, too, you know, like to, to Pete's point, you know, you're doing a podcast most days of the week. And this is an area in which you're very passionate. So you're seeing that because that's on your radar all the time. I'm looking for it. Yeah, I want to see it. I'm like, why isn't it there? How come people aren't talking about that there? I'm watching for these messages because I'm seeing people who are going to vote for Trump who have no idea that this could potentially be in their child's future. And that's the time I'm looking at other sources going, how come it's not out there? Why isn't it mainstream? If you name a source, I'll show it to you. And any source. Well, I'm not trying to put you on the defensive. I'm talking well, no, about. No, no, no. I'm I'm not, trying- I, I think this is, I think your point is extremely accurate and true. I believe, it, I fully agree with you. It's what not I'm, in the zeitgeist in the I'm way in your head it hair. is. But mm-hmm. I'm I'm splitting all kinds of hairs. I have <laughs> you have no hairs left to split, baby. Split too many yeah. hair. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> which is which is a little bit to do with messaging, as Dean mentioned with with Frank Luntz. I prefer George Lakoff, and people should listen. I like to George him. Lakoff. Also, George, I don't know George. George, he's a linguist, George. and but but what's I, his last name? Lakoff, L A K O F F, and a lot of uh, progress listeners told me about him years ago. Uh, but I think I think the bottom line is 
that it, it does, it, it's there and we're doing the best. I'm a Democrat in a town. We are doing our best to get that message out, whether you hear it or not is the struggle. And again, I think it's important. Well, that's the struggle. A lot, a lot of the times we're not just touting our accomplishments, we're reacting to their crazy conspiracy right. theories. And finally, the best example of this is 2010, I think, Obama passes uh, Obamacare, it passes. They have a huge press conference to talk about it with the President of the United States. And it's ostensibly supposed to be all about healthcare. And some reporter asks them about Skip Gates and the Harvard police officer and the beer gate. And that's all anybody talked about the next day. Was that's how life, o that's how Obama's the answer work though. Obama it's, said he, that cop is a jackass and it's all, and we didn't talk about healthcare and right. you can blame Obama if you want, that's fine. But the right. point is it's how media works and how our brains work. It was all about healthcare and all we heard. And that's just one example. I could give you a hundred more about how media works. I, think I do love a, Lou, Henry Louis Gates very much, though. Go ahead. Okay. There's a piece so of much. this on the yeah. left, and maybe this is just me personally or the, the circles that I'm in on social media, where it's if I went out and said, hey, here are the great things that Biden is doing, I would get destroyed by everybody that I know for not pointing out all the ways that he's falling short. And I think there's a there's a sense on the left of correctly pointing out the problems and focusing on the problems that if I posted something that was like, hey, I learned that the stock market has been higher now than it ever was during Trump. That seems like something I would get destroyed by every single person I know for not bringing up all the issues <laughs> that I should be focused on. And I think that's not happening on the right. I think on the right, I agree. there's a lot of let's celebrate America. We're proud to be Americans. The left or the devil, the end. And so you're just not, we're not in a, in a, you know, that's an, a, a world of celebration. Honest, that's an effective message. Progressive yeah, America is great. The, the left, the, the devil, end. The end. The end. Yeah, like, I wow. All right, I'm going to go right for that? Laura's. That was really yeah. good. I think <laughs> liberal Democrats and progressives suffer from the same thing that Republicans and every. It, it, you can always point out, or in your marriage, in relationships, you can yeah. always point out what's wrong with a person. But the reality yeah. is, governing takes all kinds of compromise. And so yes. you could, I like, I would love to talk to those people who criticize you about the things Biden hasn't done. And I would, I would say to all of them, how should he do it? Yeah. Show me, show me how I agree. It's they done, have because Joe Biden has been the most answers, effective president. I'll tell you, well, people, I, I don't think. Let's bring your wife into this conversation. Hang on, I'm going to bring your wife in now, Mrs. Dominic. Let's talk. So, look, I, I think that what Pete, I, I think Pete, you live in a in a in a shed, and that in that shed, <laughs> not a bubble, a shed, a bubble. You live in a shed where <laughs> you are covering shed. everything. It better, and you're having great guests on because I see your guests; they're really <laughs> great, and you're covering it. And some people <laughs> really pay attention to stuff, hear it. But there's so many Americans who For don't sure. hear anything. And if it doesn't get hit in their face 90 times right. over and over and over. And that was the thing about Trump. Not only did he say it, the media repeated it because it was simplistic. And a lot of times they were fact checking it, but they were repeating it. And what mm -hmm. Trump learned is that if they're arguing within that box, George Lakoff would talk about this too. If they're arguing within your framing, you're winning. Mm -hmm. So is Trump the greatest president ever? You know, well, or is, mm -hmm. is Trump you think, but make the strongest economy ever? You have a debate within that frame. He's winning. Right. That's Does everybody here agree, though, to make my final point, please, that Democrats have, arguments that Democrats have done an amazing job focusing on reproductive rights in the, and, and the overturning of Roe v. Wade in every state and every election in the Biden campaign. I mean, I think that we can talk all day about politics and the Perfect. campaign and it's five months away. The issue that matters the most is women's reproductive rights. And I believe, t tell me if you think that they haven't done a good job communicating on that and focusing on that. And I had the head of Planned Parenthood on earlier on the show today. And there's a reason why, because of that very point. It is. I actually think they could do better. Go ahead. I think Why? they can do better because I think people think abortion is just a, uh, oops, I got pregnant and I don't want to have this uh, fetus. And I think abortion is about miscarriages. It's about dying fetuses in you. It encompasses so much more than just, I got pregnant and I don't want to have this pregnancy. It's I, as a woman who had five miscarriages, I know what that's like. I know that a DNC is an abortion. I want to go up to a microphone to most of these Republican people and go, I know you don't believe in abortion. What about spontaneous abortions? Are you for those? Because most have no idea that that's a miscarriage and that's the same term i would love to do that i think there's so much that we can be highlighting these women there's a woman in tennessee who's running for state legislature her name is um ali phillips and uh she is running locally had to come to new york to have an abortion her fetus dying in her could not have it done in tennessee same as the texas woman we should be showing these women we should be following them we should be showing their journeys we should be doing little minute 30 second freaking 
bloop, 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 bloops about them. The woman who now has her fifth kid who can't afford it, the one who mm. can't get the, any uh, health care or, 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 or support. I think we can be doing so much more to show the everyday lives of women and families and men impacted by this. So I, much I, more. Look, I wish we, uh, that's a great topic. And I, and I wish we had more time. We didn't even get to half the t- other topics I want to talk about. But the issue about abortion is that it's personal. It's not political. It, it affects, it's the most personal. You're forcing a woman against her will to carry a fetus to term. People are listening because it's affecting them. But we have to, before we-, we have But like it is the most left. important, Pete, and he's right. It is right. the most yeah. important one. So I just yeah. want everyone to give a chance to, to plug your litany of great stuff you're doing. Maureen, let's start with you. Where can people oh. find more of your work? Maureen Langan, L-A-N-G-A-N on the stalking sites, Instagram, <laughs> Facebook, and my website, it's MaureenLangan.com. And tune into WBAI in New York City on Wednesdays at four o'clock. Just go to my website. I'll have all the details. Check it out because my show's not on then, so I don't care. And <laughs> Dr. Andrew Jones-Roy, what about you? Where can people find your work? Uh, You can find me at Jonesroy, J-O-N-E-S-R-O-O-Y on all the stalking sites and my website (laughs) and at uh, my new site, Data Science Needs You, where I'm uh, teaching everyone and particularly people who care about the issues we've been talking about, but don't feel particularly well equipped to dig into the data, how to do so and how to do so thoughtfully, ethically, blah, blah, blah. So datascienceneedsyou.com. And Pete, where's your shed? Where, where can people <laughs> about 20 feet behind my house it's about right. 75 square feet and i love it i spend a lot of time on tiny house uh, websites and every day i host the smartest people i can find talking about the most impactful issues that affect you your community your country your planet and even yourself anxiety depression all that i talk to smart people and it's the greatest job in the world so come listen and, and good for you up. doing the school board. I'm really glad yeah. for you yes. working on that. Congratulations. It, did you mention the website? I'm sorry. Standupwithpete.com. Stand up with Pete. All right, check it out. You thank guys, you. thank you so much for being on. You were Thanks, great. Man. It was a really good, compelling conversation. We'll take a break, come back. 